hi everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to our presentation. I know it's the last one of the day and it's um, been a long and fun day, but still long. Um, so the title of our presentation is Adapting to Asynchronicity Using LibGuides for a New Teaching Model. My PowerPoint is already not cooperating. This is not good. <laughs> see. Not advancing on the go. Yeah. Um, so I'm a Mar I'm Mary Ann Cullen. I'm the associate department head at, the, at Georgia State University's Alpharetta campus. And I'm Shiji Katharia. I'm the reference and instruction librarian at the Alpharetta campus with some other titles there as well. <laughs> So the overview of what we're going to talk about today is why we use LibGuides as an instruction platform. We're going to show some examples. We'll talk about the infrastructure and training involved in this program, and we'll talk a little bit about assessment time permitting. So this originated um, back in 2010 when I became the online learning librarian for about 7,000 students at what was then GPC Online. Um, and the first thing that I was charged with doing was working with the English department to develop an instruction module for the template. So my goals for this were I wanted to promote access to the librarian and library resources like we always do with instruction. The library instruction needed to be in iCollege, which is what we call our D2L learning management system. And my idea was that I would be an embedded librarian in these classes. And I had ideas about what I wanted to do, but I didn't actually know how to do any of them. So, <laughs> so I consulted with our um, Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning, often called CEDL, and talked to them about this. And they really discouraged me from being a, a, an embedded librarian. One, there were 7,000 students and just me, but also um, there's a certain amount of trust that needs to be built between a librarian and instructor before they really feel comfortable letting you into their class. So, um, you know, they said, no, let's, let's, let's do this a different way. And all of the classes were asynchronous. That was another challenge. Uh, so, you know, forget the, the embedded librarian. And instead, I was going to make library instruction that could be linked to or embedded in iCollege. Um, it was very important to me to retain control of the content. I already had learned that, you know, once their instructor gets their hands on a video or a handout or something, they just use it forever and it never gets updated if you don't have control of it. And also, I wanted to be able to collect some statistics or some kind of assessment and find out if the things were being used. So this is what we came up with. Um, this was not the very first iteration of this, but the English 1102 online guide that was designed for a literature um, paper related to literature. So this was designed to go along with the assignment in the English 1102 module that most of the online English 1102 instructors used. So it already started off being designed to go along with a, an assignment. Within that, I included some videos. The videos could be um, reused in other tutorials. And I also had the idea to put a quiz in there. And sometimes I would include a student survey, get some feedback. So this worked pretty well. Um, so this is one of the great feedbacks. I did not get a lot of great feedback. I think, you know, 12 over many years. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, you know, the students said they wanted some interactivity. They want to check for understanding questions and exercises to practice new skills. So I incorporated some of those into the guide over time. And overall, it worked pretty well. Uh, the asynchronous instruction was well used given the LibGuide stats. Um, I got some students contacting me directly for help, or they would say, they come to the library and go, 
you're the lady in the videos. And I'd be like, yeah, I am. And they'd say, oh, thanks, that was so helpful. So that was like the best day, you know. Um, so I, and the thing was I was able to update videos and content without going into iCollege itself and changing anything. It was just like a change it in the LibGuide, here's our new interface. Even when we consolidated the LibGuide, just converted over to Georgia State's branding. We stuck new Georgia State videos in there and just carried on. So, um, so I, I was also able to add and subtract some content. I put um, FAQs in there from our Lib Answers, and I put suggested readings in there um, based on stats and survey feedback. The FAQs and the suggested readings I mostly took right back out because the students weren't using them. The challenges were that it was mostly generic. Um, this was fine with the English 1102 template, but many of the instructors developed their own assignments that were different from the template and didn't ask me to create fit guides for those. Um, almost no one took the quiz. The instructors wanted feedback from the students and they developed their own quizzes, so I had no feedback on student learning. And then over time, the template changed, different things changed, and uh, uh, the personnel in the department changed, and there wasn't a lot of feedback. It was very difficult for me to get feedback from the instructors on how to update the guide. And so this guide is actually still in use today. I am no longer the online learning librarian. I have learned a lot about LibGuides since 2010. I would not design it the same way now. I think there's too much content in here, but because instructors have their own quizzes, I'm afraid to change anything that isn't wrong. You know, with the, the database, like we changed some databases. I had to change to different databases, but just afraid to take anything out of it in case it's on their quiz. So fast forward to 2010, to 2020, and we have a new problem, and we all know what that was. And um, so suddenly everybody was online. So I was asked to help, because of my online experience, asked to help the other perimeter instruction librarians to get ready to teach online. So we retained the same goals of having a way to embed or link to library instruction in the learning management system, and that librarians would contain con retain control of content and statistics. So there were some additional uh, goals. We needed this to be pretty quick to pivot to online instruction. And almost all of our librarians are reasonably well versed in LibGuides. So using LibGuides as a platform was fairly easy, especially compared to maybe learning the learning management system or learning something else. Um, we still were mostly going to teach asynchronously, but there were some instructors that might want synchronous instruction, and so something that could be used in both of those situations. Wanting to be able to customize it to the class or the assignment, breaking content into manageable parts, and we really wanted to retain that, that individual librarian relationship with a class. So my approach to this as the person who was leading this was, do you make a LibGuide? Because that's what I do. So um, I made a LibGuide that was kind of the repository for our training and our resources. It started with uh, the first bunch of tabs, our videos and interactive tutorials and different things that you could reuse in a LibGuide to teach a class. And then further down of the, on this guide, you can see in the menu, there were librarian skills. So we covered things like making videos, some best practices for LibGuides, how to use LibWizard, tips about iCollege, how to use WebEx. Um, we had a show and tell where people could bring things that they used that worked and talked about um, personal branding and marketing in an online environment to try to get the faculty to realize that we were still there and wanting to, to participate in their classes. Like I said, one of the main things we wanted to do was make it personal. We had learned through our face-to-face -face instruction that the students really gravitated toward the librarian who did their class. 
they somehow had developed a feeling that this person was going to be able to help them and they were going to be nice. So we wanted to translate that. So we made sure that on these guides, you know, the librarian's picture or a video, a short little introductory video was there, contact information. We started doing research appointments, which we hadn't done before, online research appointments. And the whole point of that was just to say, I'm the librarian for this class. This content is for your assignment, and you can contact me if you need help. So the best practice is to organize the guide for the assignment, because the students tend to just go straight for the tabs that they see as being the most relevant. So in, on the first page, we introduced ourselves and what the guide was for, emphasized how the guide related to the student's assignment so they could see that it was not just busy work, it was something they could actually use. Um, and then the tabs went along with the assignment to the extent possible. Sometimes you can't avoid tabs like ebooks because you have too much to say about ebooks. Um, and but the tabs are still clear about what the content is. So we also had gotten LibWizard by this time, and so we were able to build some LibWizard tutorials for interactive learning. This is an example of LibWizard, if you haven't ever seen inside LibWizard. So over on the left-hand side, there's an opportunity to do some instructional teaching, and then you can also add some interactive elements like surveys and questions along the way. On the right-hand side, um, it's called the slide panel. You can, this is actually a live um, interactive web page that's in the ebook databases. Um, you can also put a slide, like a equivalent of a PowerPoint slide. You can put um, a video and ask, then ask questions about the video. There's all different kinds of comment, content that you can put over on the right hand side. So one of the bonuses to this is that we actually also used LibGuides in real time instruction. It kept us from having to do the switch from PowerPoint to screen sharing because we could just put everything in the LibGuide. And then, of course, the students could go back and refer to the guide as needed. And we found that the students were much more likely to use the guide if it was used in class rather than just doing a regular instruction session and saying, oh, yeah, I made you a guide. They did never tend to use those guides. So this is an example of that type of guide that we used in a class. Um, this was about a primary sources assignment and a history class. We talked about what a primary source was, and there's an exercise down here towards the bottom left um, about with different resources asking the students to say if they thought it was a primary source or not. I've also made a LibWizard version of this. And then I had a video up in the upper right-hand corner that talked. I played it in class about what is a primary source. And then from there, we went into the specific databases they were supposed to use. OK, so I guess it's my turn to talk now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I, I guess I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience as I was the new instruction librarian who started in this position last July, um, how I kind of use LibGuides in my instruction. Um, so when I first started, there was actually not a lot of requests for live synchronous instruction at all. Um, so when I was kind of introducing myself to various faculty at virtual meetings, I was, you know, presenting what I could do. Um, and I initially presented myself as somebody who could also teach Zotero in the classroom. So that piqued the interest of one of the professors who was in the English department meeting. And so she approached me as just kind of saying, how could you teach Zotero to my students? Um, but then as we talked more and more in our consultation, it kind of sounded like she needed a lot more than just a simple Zotero tutorial. She wanted all kinds of things, and I should mention that she has worked at the university for probably 15 plus years and has never requested library instruction at all for her classes. Um, she kind of didn't want to give up that class time per se for library instruction, as she as she said. So um, while we were talking, I said, let me just go ahead and make a LibGuide for you that kind of shows you all the resources that would help your students, um, including just some sample like tutorial videos. 
And I just kind of presented that to her as like, this is something that could probably be used in your class. And she liked it a lot enough to say, okay, this is great. Actually, can I just go ahead and just use this <laughs> LibGuide in my class? Um, so the kind of just in the discussion, just building a LibGuide just seemed to be the best way to show her all the ways the library could support her in her class. So that's the link to the LibGuide, which I'll be demoing in a minute. You can go to the next slide. So um, she liked it a lot. It obviously had a lot higher usage in the fall. I think there's just more sections of 1101 taught in the fall, um, but she did want to reuse and adapt it for this semester as well. And then she told me that she wanted to use this as actually the template that all the online instructors would use for their course. And again, I'll demo the LibGuide in a minute. You can go to the next slide. So these are just, this was just some sample feedback that we got from her as well as another professor saying that they wanted to use this as an online template um, and just wanted to showcase that professors really liked it. And it was it, it was a lot of professors who didn't really use library instruction a lot, so it was nice to hear that these were professors who'd worked a long time and were finding new ways to incorporate the library in their courses that they hadn't before. So I guess at this point we will be switching sharing, Marianne. I'll show you some of these LibGuides. All right. Bear with me. Okay, hopefully my LibGuide is coming through and just interrupt if you can't see my screen. Um, so this is an example of the 1101 LibGuide that I made. So again, I wasn't present at all in the class. This was just something that she linked her students to. Um, so I, I just I organize my LibGuide by what the students might need. So I recorded one tutorial on how to find resources, and I also provided her the embed code for this YouTube so she could put it in iCollege, but the home page was on my LibGuide. And then I also linked to relevant resources that the students might want to use in their research. And then she initially approached me for helping teach Zotero. And again, I couldn't visit the class, it was all asynchronous. So I recorded a two-part tutorial in YouTube using Camtasia and then exporting to YouTube and captioning and all that um, and embedded those in my LibGuide as well. But again, I also provided her the embed code to use in her iCollege, but I was able to retain all the stats of how they were being watched and how much and that kind of thing. And then I just had a simple tab on how to contact me and get more help. So this one was pretty simple. Um, again, this was a professor who had never requested library instruction and she's worked at the university for 15 plus years teaching English. So it was nice to, that we could provide her a way to incorporate the library in her class. Um, and the next LibGuide I'm going to show, this was for an honor seminar for English 1102. And I organized this LibGuide more by the actual assignment itself. Um, the professor had a research essay assignment where he wanted the students to do research on a local community issue. Um, particularly around Atlanta and Georgia. So I linked to some local resources as well as just general databases and data sources for the students to look up. And then I made another tab for their second assignment, which was to create a website based on that community issue. And he was very interested in the students obviously finding appropriate images to use on their website and copyright, not copyrighted. So I recorded a short tutorial on how to um, find those kinds of images using Google and various uh, search engines and recommended some websites for them to use and how to create a call to action and things like that. So this one was much more organized by the exact assignment that they were working on. Um, and it was kind of just like a one stop shop for the students to come to and say, OK, when I go to my website assignment, this is where I need to go. And then the nice thing about LibGuides is that you can actually just reuse tabs that you've already created. So there's a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of work to make these pages, but then you can actually just reuse different elements for different LibGuides. So I um, ended up just reusing the same work that I made for the other LibGuide for the citing sources, because he also was interested in the students learning Zotero as well. Um, Zotero has been a very popular way, I find, for to get in with professors who may not request a lot of library instruction. Um, any kind of digital tools that we can incorporate, the professors seem to like that. So that's essentially um, all I had to demo in terms of the LibGuides. Um, we have links to all of these LibGuides that we're showing um, for you to look at at the end if you'd like to. So Marianne, you can take it away. Am I still coming in? Hello? I was muted. Oh, I was like, <laughs> did I lose everybody? Okay, good. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, 
So um, how are we going to show impact? You know, we, we I guess like most people, we wanted to make sure that we kept our jobs, so we wanted to show that we still mattered, that they didn't need to just replace us with recordings and videos. Uh, so um, one of the nice things about using LibGuides is keeping that data, whereas if we had made something for iCollege and we were not embedded, we would not have access to the usage. So with the guides, you know, we got numbers of page views, or numbers of guide views and numbers of page views. Um, we were able to see what resources the students were using. So on this example, the students were obviously, you know, using it pretty well to go to eBooks on EBSCOhost, but they were not really going to the, the extra stuff that I had um, put in there, like the MLA handbook. Sorry. In LibWizard, you can actually get this, you know, um, formative or summative assessment of student learning if you can get them to take the LibWizard tutorial. Um, I really don't, the students actually did not use the tutorials very much on their own, um, only if the instructor assigned it. And you can set up LibWizard to provide like a, an Excel spreadsheet that this, the professors can just dump that data into their um, iCollege class to um, keep the grades. With the video views, I was able to look at, you know, whether people were using the videos. Of course, this was not specific to the LibGuide. It was more general. And um, Lib YouTube actually, and most video hosts, have a lot of different kinds of data that you can um, analyze your videos. So this one was about audience retention. It's very normal for there to be a sudden drop right at the beginning of the video. That's probably just people that clicked on it and then decided they weren't going to watch it right now or it wasn't what they thought. But if there's some kind of pattern later on of a steep drop or an increase, um, you can go and look and see what's happening. So this was kind of odd that there's actually a spike up because that would mean there's more people watching here than previously. So what happened there? And it's probably that people rewatched that part or people linked specifically to that spot in the video. So I was able to play the video to that point. That's what the red line is. And it's where I told them what the library website was. So people probably said, hey, wait a minute, and they backed it up just a second to watch that part again. Another statistic is the relative audience retention. I mean, the average is, I believe that most videos are watched half of, no matter how long they are. So if you can stay above the average retention for videos, you're doing pretty good. So um, at this point in the video, suddenly I was below average. What happened? And this is where I changed the topic to say, let me show you how to find a journal when you already have a citation. And that's not something that most freshmen need to do. So my feelings aren't hurt, they, that's fine. And I probably could have cut that part out. So um, in conclusion, we felt that LibGuides were an effective platform for online instruction. Um, our, it, most of our librarians adopted that approach, not all, but most of them. Um, there was more time investment up front with all this making of videos and, you know, all the electronic part of putting the guide together, but there was potential for reuse. In spring compared to fall, there was a lot more reuse of guides. There were just as many new ones made, um, but there were quite a few that were reused also. And, the, you know, the bonus was that we gained some new faculty who preferred asynchronous instruction. And one of the things we talked about was that it was, they weren't just asking someone into their classroom blind, they could actually see what they were gonna be presenting to the students ahead of time because we could send them the guide and they could say, oh, this part's great, you know, can you leave this part out or could you explain this more, something like that. So um, we, here's a list of all the guides and tutorials that we mentioned in the video. And here is our contact information. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? Stop sharing.
so I can see things. So in the comments, Jennifer says, I like your use of video assessment as a measure to show librarian impact during the COVID era. Yes. I actually had asked the librarians to um, not only collect our usual instruction stats, but to fill out a, a report on their, their online learning objects they had created, including LibGuides and videos, and collecting that kind of data so that we could kind of report out to the dean and you know say look look how busy we've been <laughs> people are watching our videos people are using our live guides yeah it's definitely an interesting thing to report on because yeah it's not the traditional we had this many sessions we reached this many students kind of reporting so we had to kind of get creative about how we wanted to report our work um and one thing i forgot to mention earlier was um we had some assessment of student learning as well that we tried to do in LibWizard. We had a professor who showed her LibGuide in class, but then had the students do a pretest and then look at the LibGuide and then do a post-test. So there is way there are ways to use LibWizard and LibGuides to kind of assess student learning based on using the LibGuide in class. Um, so those are interesting ways to kind of, you know, assess student learning maybe. Okay, Jennifer asked, are there any video resources you mentioned that you might recommend? I mentioned YouTube and Camtasia. Um, I have used Camtasia and YouTube for a long time. I found that the videos I made that were in YouTube were watched a lot more than videos on other platforms, and I don't know if people were finding them in, in YouTube and they weren't coming there from the LibGuide, or if they just felt more comfortable with YouTube, but I was like, if they want to watch them in YouTube, that's good with me. I get good stats from YouTube. Um, we do have another platform called Kaltura. I don't know if that's a USG-wide platform or if something Georgia State has. Um, that one is good for – it. you can keep it internal to uh, your LMS. So if you are going to do something private, you know, some professors don't want their assignments you know, if you're teaching about assignment, it's going to be kind of obvious what the assignment is sometimes. They may not want that on YouTube. So you can, uh, you know, keep it in Kaltura, and then it, they can import it into class. And you still get some stats. It's not quite the same. but And Kaltura is the best with captioning, wouldn't you say? Right. Yes, Kaltura is great for captioning. I actually jump back and forth between platforms depending on what I want it to do. So I'll, cap I'll make something and in Camtasia, put it in Kaltura to caption it, and then put it in YouTube. And I've just used Camtasia, and I auto, I just uh, manually type in the captions, because that's easier for me. That's fine when it's five minutes, when you have an hour yeah. long <laughs> thing, it's not very fun. It takes, it takes me a week to caption a video. It repeats them in four seconds. Does yeah. this like auto loop so you just hear your voice over and over again? It's terrible. <laughs> Get used to yourself. <laughs> but yeah, we're happy to share slides with anybody. I can type our um, emails in the chat if anybody yeah. needs the slides or anything beyond the recording. The learning objects guide, the one that's oh, I, you're, I'm not sharing my screen, but it's it's research.library.gsu.edu/learningobjects. Um, that's where we kept all of our learning materials. So, and that's, it's privately published. It's not something you would just find, but if you, yeah, if you want to look at it, I mean, that's where I have the resources, including things like there, uh, some people at uh, Augusta did a, a great study on best practices for videos. So I, you know, I pulled in other stuff. It wasn't all me. So I have that in there. Jennifer said they've used uh, Canvas's video tool, mixed results. Yeah. yeah. I've never used it. I haven't either. Once you find a tool you like, you kind of just stick with it. <laughs> so, yeah. We have access like to a Canvas, but it's not our main LMS, so I haven't 
really played with it very much. I've heard it's great. The professors really flock to YouTube, I found, you know, it's just a very comfortable format for everybody to embed their videos in iCollege and things, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank asking you so us much. questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for presenting. Um, it was it was really interesting, and I love LibGuide, so I was really excited about this one. Who and doesn't? You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. I like using them. <laughs> yeah. We do too. Thank you. Thank you.